Okay, first job on the newly set up mill, let's machine these vice hold down clamps. Here in Fusion 360, I set up the hole pattern in my table and the important features of the vise, and I've modeled up some vice hold down clamps. Their design is overly complicated, but I wanted to use some 3 8 inch aluminum stock that I have on hand, and I wanted to do some tool changes to try out my new machine. So the clamps consist of two separate pieces and three different milling operations. The two pieces are going to be joined together with M5 screws. First I'm going to mill out four of these top pieces, then four of these bottom pieces, then the third operation is going to be milling out these holes that I'm going to manually thread. Okay, let's take a look at the cam file for this first operation. First I'm going to mill out these four holes for the hold down screws, then I'm going to counter bore these eight holes for the M5 screws. Then I'm going to mill the contour halfway down to expose the edge for the chamfering bit. Uh, which I'm going to do next. Then I'm going to come back and finish the contours, leaving tabs to hold the pieces into position. Alright, with the cam file set up, I export it using the Mazo Post Processor. I've got the three tools loaded that I'm going to use. Uh, tool 1 is a quarter inch two flute. Tool 2 is a 45 degree chamfer. And tool 3 is an eighth inch two flute. You can also see I've got 201, 2, and 3 assigned here in the Mazo controller. And I was sure to use the same tool numbers uh, in my file in Fusion 360. With the Mazo link application, you can just drag and drop your file and upload it to your machine. It's pretty convenient. First, I'm going to change to my Pro uh, so I can set the Z height and the uh, X and Y zero positions. Okay, I think I'm ready to start. Let's see, I've already transferred the file over. Uh, I've got my speeds and feeds set really slow because uh, of my temporary uh, vice clamps. I don't want it uh, moving the vice around. So let's get this started.
I was holding my breath there at the end waiting for parts to come flying or the end metal break, but they turned out pretty good considering the amount of vibration there. Okay, so after cutting this out, I realized there's several things I need to address. Uh, number one, I need to make the tabs thicker. That's an easy fix uh, in my cam file. Uh, number two, I need to add more air pressure to clear the chips. I thought I had it open pretty wide, but then I realized I didn't, so that's an easy fix. Number three, I think I want to add an exhaust fan to remove the uh, moisture in there from the mist coolant uh, to protect the electronics. Number four, I think I want to add a splitter to my airline so I can add a handheld uh, air blower to uh, clear chips and to clean the parts off when I'm done. Number five, I think I need to take a look at the G-code file and see what the post processor is doing because uh, the machine was just pausing whenever it came to do a tool change and I had to go press the resume button to make it start up again so something's not right there. I get a hole cut out so I can install the exhaust fan. And I get my airline splitter installed. And I'm ready to move forward with the second operation. These are basically just cutting out these four blocks, except this time I'm going to leave a thicker tab so the parts don't vibrate all over the place. I get my file uploaded. And I use the probe to set the Z0. Alright, they look pretty good. Uh, the thicker tabs held them much more securely there at the end. 
All right, I'm gonna clean off these tabs now. I'm just gonna use the jog wheel on the pendant and use the machine like a manual mill. I flip them over to clean up the other side. My intent was to make these blocks the same height as the bottom edge of the vise and they were slightly too tall so I take off a little bit more material here. Alright everything looks good so I'm ready for the third operation. Alright for this operation I'm just going to mill out the two holes in each block uh, because I don't have the correct size drill bit uh, for the M5 tap. And then I'm going to add a slight chamfer to the edge just for uh, starting the tap and to do a tool change, of course. So this is my G-code exported from Fusion 360 uh, with a Mazo post processor. You can see there's a tool change right here. And the thing that's peculiar about it is right below on the next line, it's calling another tool. So that seems like that's not supposed to be there. So I'm just going to add a space. And whenever I do a search uh, for the next tool change here, uh, you can see that the same thing happens. Uh, it changes to tool 2, but then it calls tool 3 right below it. So, I don't know. I'm going to add a space there too and see if it fixes the problem. Man, I love not having to transfer files with a USB drive. My G-code is just for doing one block at a time, so I set two in the vise to balance the vise pressure and then run the operation twice. The G-code is set up to use the front left corner as the origin point, so I use the probe to find that position. And then I use the jog wheel to go up and over to set the Z0 height. Alright, everything looks good, so let's get these holes tapped. I test fit a screw to make sure these holes are deep enough. Alright, all the parts are ready for assembly. Now that they're assembled, I realize I made a mistake. Um, I never bothered tramming in the vise uh, since I was just using the temporary clamps, and it wasn't really going to matter for any of the first operations. <laughs> but when I came back uh, for the second operation to drill and tap those holes, now everything's slightly crooked because 
it actually wasn't straight across the work piece. Oh well, it's just cosmetic. I'll tram it in when I attach these new clamps. I get these temporary 3D printed clamps removed. As I'm bolting down these new clamps, um, they don't quite fit. And I remember that when I was designing the file, um, I was gonna have to take off a little bit off the bolt heads in order to make them fit. So, oh, it's a good excuse to use my lathe. I don't know what it is about this machine, but I enjoy the opportunity every time I get to use it. I just knocked off of these so they should fit now. Alright, everything's loosely clamped down so I can properly tram the vise this time. All right, first job's complete. Uh, I had a blast making these first parts on the Super Pro Lite with the Mazo controller, and I'm looking forward to using this machine in the future. I just wanted to mention that even in that last operation where I uh, edited the G-code, uh, the machine still paused at the tools change, so I gotta do further investigation there to figure out what's going on. Uh, but uh, thanks for watching, and special thanks to all my Patreon members who make this all possible. Uh, you guys are awesome, thank you.